In a few hours from now, President Obama will give his first State of the Union address since getting re-elected, and he will use all the political and rhetorical clout at his disposal to emphasize what has become a legacy issue for him, tighter, tighter gun laws in America. In the audience will be the grieving mother of a 15-year-old Chicago girl who was shot in the back after school, not far from where I'm standing right now. You see, when President Obama talks about gun control and gun violence, he's not just thinking of the massacre at the San Diego Elementary School in Connecticut two months ago. He's also thinking about his own hometown. It is here, on the streets of the South Side, that he cut his political teeth as a community organizer. It is here, right on this road, three miles north from here, that he still owns a house. So, for President Obama, this is an incredibly important issue. And remember, in Chicago, more civilians are killed from gun violence than American soldiers on the battlefields of Afghanistan. We start today's special series on guns in America here on the South Side, where the gun is the law, with a film shot by John Lowenstein and reported by Kylie Morris. Now I can't pledge allegiance to your flag Cause I can't find no reconciliation with your past When there was nothing equal for my people in your math You forced us in the ghetto and then you took our dads the belly Chicago, Southside The man whose body lies in this alley is Tyrone Solibri The latest name on a list of shooting victims that last year ran to two and a half thousand names But America sees this as a problem of the ghetto caused by poverty, guns, drugs. 80% of those who are killed are black. Chicago rough, real rough. You get shot just because, just because tattoos. Like, you will get shot just because somebody look at you the wrong way, you look at them the wrong way. So, yeah, it's rough for Chicago. Johnny Black is in pain, but recovering. He's talking to photographer John Lowenstein, who lives and works on the South Side. For 10 years, John's kept a record of the community's intimate moments of life, death, and survival. What happened, man? Some guy just came out the alley and started shooting. I was, I was in front of him, so he shot me from behind. I was shot 10 times, grazed twice. And... Did you see him? Yeah, like, when I, from the first shot, the first shot he did, it hit me. And that's what made me turn around. From the turn, it was just like the, the devil, because when you turn, just white eyes, big, bulky white eyes. And just the gun just going off. Like, it's all, all I could see. The victims are getting younger, and their injuries more complex due, doctors say, to the increased use of automatic weapons. It's so easy to get a hold to a gun. People don't want to, they don't, they don't want to talk talk stuff out no more. It's just all about violence. They think if you could take somebody off the face of the earth, then there won't be any problems anymore. But it's just caused more problems and it's killing our generation. Here's how it breaks down. 175 of those killed last year were older than 18, younger than 24. 50 were high school aged, between 13 and 17. That's about the same number of teenagers as turn out for the daily South Shore drill team rehearsal. And another thing, 400 of the 500 shot dead within half a mile of their homes. I'm just walking down the street. They're coming down the street. I thought they was coming for me. They came for the boy that was walking in front of me. I don't know who he was. They came up, pistol whipped him. I turned around and just went the other way. He fell out, though. When I'm not in my hood or with my friends, I got to watch my back when I'm around some people I don't know, because I, I can't trust everybody. And a lot of these kids are really scared, you know. They're scared and they just want to fit in. They want to fit in, they want to be able to have a safe, their way of a safe passage. If I could build my relationship with this person, that person, or that, I can walk to the gas station free. 
Sam Binion is unofficial mayor to this neighborhood known as Pocket Town. He works with younger and younger children. Sam already know a lot about the way the streets work. People do stuff for certain kind of reasons. Some people just do something just to prove that they are a hitter or they the best shooter or they can kill people. And what's a hitter, man? A hitter is when your boss sends you to come do something and if he tell you go kill a man, you kill him. Or if he tell you go paralyze him, you paralyze him. If he tell you what to do, you have to do it, or you they they the whole your whole squad, your whole crew give you give you a violation. Shooting, violence, doing dumb stuff for no apparent reason, like going up to somebody and just saying I'ma shoot you for no apparent reason, just going to get a gun just to bring it out the house and show off with it. No, that's something I would never ever do. Cause that's a dumb decision and I'm never gonna make that mistake. No, leaders, I mean, leaders, community leaders, church leaders, you know, pol politicians. It's happening every day. They are kids, we making them. What are we gonna do? Devontae Porter was made, lived, and died on the South Side, shot and killed at 18. His mother admits he was no angel. She thinks he was shot over a girl. Police have made no arrests and say it's an open case. Just one in four cases are solved. Donna says she feels let down by their investigation and by the community. She came to my house and uh, she, she, she explained to me that my son was found dead. She had said that he had sustained two gunshot wounds, one in the uh, left arm, which penetrated his chest, and one straight through the chest. And, and both of these shots was by a nine millimeter gun. So whoever shot my son meant to kill him. Uh, second of all, um, I went over there, I jump in the car and I go over there. It's a complex, I say about 20 apartments in there, you know, from top to bottom plus basement. I knock on the door, I say, hey, you know, uh, the guy, the young guy that got killed out here was my son. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I said, did you know anything? Did you hear anything? Oh, I didn't see nothing. I don't know. Then you get the door shut in your face. Donna and Devonte were strangers in that neighborhood. Among 100,000 people displaced when the city demolished estates like these, known as projects, at a cost of over a billion dollars. In a matter of years, the South Side's industrial past was wiped out and the land repackaged to entice the upwardly mobile. The move broke apart communities, dislocating families. I blame myself for moving in that neighborhood. I, I really blame myself for taking my child over there. I, it's, it's, to me, it's truly my fault. But really, though, in Chicago, where can you go? Every street I pick, you know, you got gangs hanging out. Um, I didn't know that y'all was in war over here, so now I done moved into the middle of a war zone. Chicago does have gun laws, some of the toughest in the country. Still, the murder rate is sky high. The gun lobby likes to point out the paradox. But truth is, on the streets, there's an unholy intersection. Break-ins, the black market, and imports from states with lax gun laws supply as many guns as the South Side could ever need. They're selling guns for like $10 now. Just one bag of crack will get you a gun. At the end of the day, you know, you talking to a mother of a murdered child, I'm so, I want a gun so bad because somebody killed my child, you know? And I feel that I have to protect myself and my other boys. But at the same time, do I want guns on the street for everybody to get to? Yeah, they, they need to have some type of gun control. Barack Obama and them don't know what to do, though. They don't know what to do about the gun control on the street. They can call themselves stopping it at the at, uh, higher up or at the source, but it's really, ain't gonna make, it's really not going to make a difference because they don't know how to stop the guns that's getting into these 15 and 16-year-old hands on the street. Chicago's violence grows consistently worse. Last year, the murder rate was up 16%. What does that mean? 81 more dead, 81 more grieving families. But there's no national chest beating, no calls for inquiries, no large public memorials. Instead, the South Side mourns its own way. The RIP t-shirt shop does a unique trade. It's in the neighborhood where President Obama was once a community organizer 
the grieving select photos they want transferred onto shirts. Renee is buying a shirt in memory of her husband. Yes. How long were you married for? Eight years and five months before he passed. These months flying by so fast, so fast, so fast. Man. She's already wearing another T-shirt for her sister, who was shot and killed too. So many people are dying here, it's nearly the equivalent of two new towns a month. How does it relate? How do we relate? Yeah, we relate. We, we know what they feel. They feel what we, we, we've been feeling for, for a long time. It's sad. It's sad, it's very sad. So we need to unite. I think, you know, with Obama leading, leading the charge right now, with, you know, you know, with him in the spotlight on this, and he really hampering or he really taking this personal. Obama is really taking this Connecticut thing, because now he can use that to, to help shed some light in on these people that didn't understand it when he was saying in the beginning about what was going on in our communities. What happened in Newtown has brought the fierce urgency of now to the slow massacre underway in Chicago. The people of the South Side want their president to force the change. In the meantime, they'll have to keep on taking care of their own. Keep on the walking, keep on the talking, marching up the field.